Thank you for joining the Best Center on a tour of the Building Automation Instructional Lab at Georgia Piedmont Technical College in Clarkson, Georgia, which is 11 miles northeast from Atlanta. The college serves over 20,000 students annually and enjoys a 99% job placement rate. Let's begin the tour of the 1,600 square foot lab. My name is Gerald McWhorter. I'm the program director for our air conditioning technology program that consists of residential air conditioning, commercial refrigeration, and building automation systems. And I'm Robert Kroom. I'm the instructor for building automation systems. Let's go on a tour of our lab. As you see in the lab, we have several different components and equipment. We have up top our VAV boxes, we have PIUs in the rear, and we have controls mounted, three different types of controls, so it gives our students an idea of the various controls that they're going to find in the field. And our controllers tie into our, our main front end panel, which our panel can control through inputs and outputs as to how our actuator modulates on the, our VAV box. On our workbenches, we have three units in which we allow our students to get some exposure to our function generator, oscilloscope, and our power supplies. Uh, this station is used to teach basic and advanced electrical theory and application to control systems. These, these enclosures contain our main system controllers, uh, controllers for our air handling unit, and will also house the controllers for our, our hydronics wall. This box is our main Siemens system, system controller, which controls everything, all of the equipment, all of the devices in this building automation lab. Here we see what we're referring to as our dynamic controls wall. We call it dynamic because the students will mount, dismount the uh, devices that you see, the controllers that we have here. They'll wire to them. They'll perform various troubleshooting activities with them. On the left, we have our power section, various 24 volt transformers that are fed by our 120 volt circuit coming in. We have DC power supplies on the bottom and on the top here. Moving forward, we have our front end controllers, uh, which serves as the brains, we could say, for one floor of a commercial building uh, serving various offices. We have a number of manufacturers, Siemens, their latest front end controllers. We have Allerton, Distech, Johnson, uh, Delta Controls. To the right of that, we have what's called our application-specific controllers. One of these could perform the heating and cooling, humidity control for a specific office, a small space like that. Um, Fifty or more of these can be networked back to our front-end controllers. Like our front-end controllers, we have various manufacturers for our application-specific controllers, Siemens, Distech, we have Johnson, Allerton, we have standalone controllers, as well as an easy I.O. controller down the bottom. Here we have some additional uh, Siemens application-specific controllers for VAV boxes in particular. As we move forward, you see we have a swing panel that comes out, and utilizing this swing panel, uh, it gives us uh, better usage of our real estate in that we're not just working in one dimension any longer, but we're working in two dimensions. And here, from this point forward, we have what's called I.O. devices, input-output devices. So we're looking at temperature controllers, uh, humidity sensors, um, current switches, damper actuators. Um, we have various types of relays, contactors, motion detectors, motor starters, some with um, an HOA, handoff automatic switch. Moving forward, on our next swing panel, we have pressure uh, transmitters, temperature sensors of various types, and additional relays 
these referred to as relay in a box relays. Going forward, we have economizer uh, controllers that we're going to use in connection with our dampers mounted on the wall so the students can understand uh, the energy saving process of economizing. Then we have additional input output devices, push buttons, lights, horns, uh, fans, flow switches, etc. The students in working with this dynamic wall will understand how these devices work together as they wire circuits from schematics and they will even be able to design um, various control systems uh, in the design and installation class. We also focus a lot on troubleshooting. So troubleshooting with these devices is something that will be focused on as well. This will give the students a good working knowledge overall of various controllers as well as specific devices used in automation. These boards here, we actually gave our students the design and they built these boards. And as you can see, they have controllers, which ties into our back neck system, also a bank of relays, actuators. And so once these are properly wired by our students, we can modulate our actuators at, on our front end computer. And students can actually see uh, the lights come on. They can see the, the damper actuator modulating up and down based on the signal that it received. So again, our students, they're able to, to demonstrate competencies or to demonstrate a certain level of expertise by wiring these boards rewiring them and wiring them back up again. Up here you see uh, a bank of zone sensors so our students get an opportunity to understand how to install and troubleshoot these zone sensors and if we go over this green light that's illuminated this is a status light indicating that we have power. The far right the first white light indicates first stage heat the next white is second stage heat. One blue light indicates that the zone damper is open and the second blue light indicates that the zone damper is closed. If you focus your attention up the upper left, there's a rectangular box. This is known as a variable air volume box, a VAV. And typically, this might be, it's called a low pressure system. It might be on the, in a perimeter office to give that particular office some control. They need more air, more heat. It has a heat strip. So in the wintertime, on the perimeter, where the core of the building is satisfied, uh, that particular office on the perimeter may need more heat, and this box will provide the heat by energizing a heat strip. As you follow the ductwork from this VAV box all the way to this main trunk line, which is providing high velocity, high volume air, will go down to this next box is similar to the VAV. They're both are considered terminal boxes, but this is known as a PIU, a power induction box. The difference is this box has a fan. So where the airflow is low by the time it reaches this outer zone, this perimeter zone, then this fan will kick in to provide a little more air, and it also has a damper along with a heat strip which provide the particular zone occupant additional heat and also a little more airflow. You see three various uh, sensors that are mounted on the duct. These also are networked back into our main systems controller. Uh, one senses duct static pressure, one could six CO2. And so if, if the static pressure is not where it needs to be, then the signal is read back at our main controller and then it can either ramp our main uh, fan motor up or it can ramp it down based on the static pressure that's sensed in the ductwork. In this section of our lab we have our air handling unit and our air handling unit of course it consists of 
a fan that's belt driven. It consists of a chill water coil and a hot water coil. And if you note here on the bottom, this little box, we have a temperature thermistor. And it, there's a well that is, temp, is sensing the, the temperature of our chill water and it's sending a signal back to our main building controller. And based on the set point, that controller has the ability to modulate this valve to open to allow more chill water into the chill water core or less chill water. And same is, is true with our, our hot water line going to our, our hot water coil. We have, we have a thermistor here with a sensing bulb, sensing the temperature of our supply hot water with the ability to, to modulate this actuator to let more hot water into the hot water coil or to restrict the flow. This little gray box here, TR150, is a v, VFD, a, a variable frequency drive. And what it's able to do, normally a motor operates off 60 hertz. This can slow those hertz down, drop the hertz in half. And by doing this, it slows our motor down, which minimizing how much airflow we have that's produced by our motor that's inside this box here. And you see that's a belt driven motor. By reducing the frequency, it slows the motor down and it produces less airflow. If we need more airflow, flow then we can ramp that motor up to its full capacity. Here we have our hydronic wall on our south wall of the classroom and the hydronic wall is focusing on teaching hydronic systems. We have various components that you would see on piping and we have the mechanical attributes to it obviously as well as the controls, electronics aspects, such as the control valves, various pressure sensors, and so forth. Students will really understand mechanical systems after working on such a trainer as this, uh, which is vital for automation students, not just to understand the electronics side of things, but the mechanical systems that they are actually controlling. So here we're looking at the visual display of our graphics screen for our front end control system. You'll see depicted our air handling unit and all the various uh, I.O. inputs and outputs, um, the status of them in connection with our air handling unit, which provides our air distribution uh, for our lab. And students are introduced to uh, this particular display early on in the curriculum just so that they can see where they're going in their development. In the later classes they'll learn how to set up these points, how to commission them, even how to set up graphic screens like this which are used heavily in the industry uh, for troubleshooting, uh, remote diagnostics, etc. So here we have our server. The server is a very high-powered computer which serves as the brains for a network system uh, in any building. Here within the classroom, we have our own network that's not tied to the school's network. <clears throat> it's very important to teach networking as well as uh, this is how all of our controllers here in the classroom are managed through this uh, one network, which the server uh, functions as the brains for. What is nice also is that we have an open protocol backnet uh, that we are using for our network. Therefore, uh, the controllers that we have, Siemens, Distech, um, Allerton, and even others can all communicate over this one network. In addition, are the laptops that you see on the desk. Uh, they are all networked back to our server. Um, upwards of 20 uh, can be used at this time uh, with the potential for more. So here at this location, working with the server, we have a centralized um, location for managing users' rights, um, the main functions, 
of our network, etc., and really helping the students to see what goes on as far as networking is concerned inside of a commercial building. Mm -hmm.